Good morning. And welcome to a very exciting day in CD9. I'm so excited that you're here to join me as we present the Dolores Huerta Apartments to our CD9 community. I'd like to start by thanking all of our special guests who are with us today, this innovative, groundbreaking project, and our special guest, Dolores Huerta herself. Dolores, we thank you for all of your contributions and your inspiration. You have certainly inspired us to do the most and do the best. Uh, I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say that we are truly honored for this occasion with your presence. Before we begin our special program, I want to introduce uh, Lizzie and Cynthia from Dolores Huerta Elementary School right here uh, on East 31st Street in our district uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies. Good morning. My name is Lizzie Oriana. And my name is Cynthia Contreras. Please join us as we say the flag salute. Please stand. Please put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, and invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Uh, we really appreciate that, and you're going to be seeing more of them uh, in a minute. They are really our future leaders, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. You know, over the past several years, it's been my mission to create more affordable housing uh, for our community uh, in an effort to bring relief to our working class families and to help end the homelessness crisis in our, in our community. I'm very proud to say that here in CD9, I've been able to approve more than 2,400 units of affordable and homeless housing now in the pipeline. Let me repeat that, 2,400 units in the pipeline. In fact, nearly 900 of those units are scheduled to be completed by the end of next year. And so we're very, very excited about that. As you know, we're facing a housing crisis like never seen before uh, in the county of Los Angeles and really throughout California and throughout our nation. Rising rents, high cost of living uh, have created extreme hardships for many of our neighbors. Homelessness is at an all time high. And I'm not proud to say that in my district, uh, we have the second largest population of unhoused Angelinos. As they say, extraordinary times call for extraordinary solutions and measures. So for that reason, last July, I introduced an emergency motion to select a developer for this city-owned site. That resolution allowed us to expedite the process that would normally take uh, 18 months, we were able to reduce it down to six months. My goal with this pilot was to demonstrate that when the public and private sector come together uh, to work on a noble cause, anything is possible. Because of our efforts, we're going to be back in the fall to celebrate our ribbon cutting. Uh, and that's how we fast track housing here in CD9. The Dolores Huerta Apartments is an ex excellent example of how persistence and collaboration can forge new paths towards the creation of much needed affordable housing. In addition to cutting down on the length of time it takes to select a developer to build on properties, I was also very concerned with the skyrocketing cost associated uh, with, these, with these units. That's because uh, affordable housing is really not affordable. With the average cost of one unit being sometimes almost $600,000, I was determined to find a way to do it in a more cost-effective manner, to provide affordable housing in a more effective manner. My team uh, identified a local modular builder, Create uh, uh, Modular, uh, who utilizes shipping containers, shipping container-based housing solutions to bring affordable housing. Ship your, shipping container, uh, uh, solutions. But all this would not have been done possible without our partners, RMG Housing and SDS Capital. Together, 
we were able to bring down the cost per unit from 600000 to 200000 That's right, 200000 That's a huge stride in the right direction, and I'm going to continue to look for opportunities to build faster and more affordable housing in District 9. Another key partner in this endeavor has been our Spa 6 uh, service provider, Hopix, who will work directly with our unhoused population in a compassionate uh, and in creative way. They are in integral at, in our strategies by supporting our homeless neighbors here in South, South L.A. Uh, and throughout our area. This 100% homeless housing project is targeting individuals suffering from homelessness who live within a, spe a, sp a specific uh, radius of this project site. We have people in need of housing right here in CD9, and we're working to ensure that they are the first to receive the opportunity to be housed in this 40-unit development. I believe uh, in the old saying that it takes a village, and that is what we have here today a village of mission-driven leaders who are working together to save lives by addressing homelessness. It's also fitting that this building will be named after a fierce warrior whose lifelong mission has been advocating for the marginalized and disenfranchised. Dolores Huerta has consistently taught us that if we look deep within ourselves, we will be unstoppable in what we set out to do. Her work to improve our disenfranchised communities has had a profound impact on how we address many of the humanitarian issues that we face in our community today. She coined the phrase, si se puede, and I'd like to say, yes, we can create housing opportunities for all Angelinos, that this is just the beginning of what we can do for our most vulnerable uh, in, in uh, our homeless community. Now it's my pleasure to bring up our partners to share some words about this exciting and revolutionary Dolores Huerta Apartments. But stay tuned because you're going to be hearing from the icon herself in just a few moments. Deborah LaFranchi is the founder and CEO of SDS Capital Group. Since 2001, SDS Capital has invested in an impressive $1 billion. That's billion with the B into projects across the US that are helping to transform underserved communities, alleviate poverty and promote prosperity. Here in CD9, we are proud to collaborate with the SDS team on the Dolores Huerta Apartments. Their strategy serves as a solid working model for building quality housing for the homeless while providing first the cost-effective solutions to the unprecedented homeless crisis that we're facing. It's my pleasure to invite Deborah LaFranchi to say a few words. Deborah? Thank you, Councilmember Curran. It's an honor to be here today. And thank you, Ms. Huerta, for being such an inf inspirational and transformational leader. Uh, my daughter, who's here today, actually recently wrote a report on you for school. So it is wonderful to see that you are inspiring the next generation. And undoubtedly, this project that you see here uh, to the side, the Dolores Huerta Apartments, is going to transform the lives of the 40 individuals who will soon have a new home and not be living on the street. We're all so proud of that. SDS and our investors are very proud to be part of this. Spearheaded by Council Member Price, this public-private partnership is an excellent example of how we can work together, the city, RMG, Hopix, and SDS to build these types of quality permanent supportive housing developments. As an Angelino, I'm just as disillusioned and saddened as we all are when we've seen the continued growth of homelessness right here in our backyard. The human toll is tragic. We all need to do a better job. It's astounding because California, we're the fifth largest economy in the world. We are the hub of technology and innovation. We solve problems. This problem needs to be solved, and we're working towards that. 
Success is our only option when it comes to eradicating homelessness. SDS invests in the poorest communities of our country, the Mississippi Delta, Appalachia, Detroit. Um, I am deeply heartened that our newest fund, the SDS Supportive Housing Fund, is investing right here in our backyard and changing the lives of those living on the streets. The 30 projects we'll be funding with RMG in California, most of them are right here in Los Angeles. And we're very proud of that. We're changing our own community. Unfortunately, those 1,800 individuals that will have units, they're waiting today. Today, they're living on the streets or in shelters. So Tim, we need to get quicker at this. <laughs> they're waiting for us. They really are. Uh, and we are in a full sprint. The 150 million fund that we hope to have fully capitalized soon is actually closing with RMG on one project every 60 days on average in 2021 and 2022. We're moving at a breakneck pace to create these units as soon as possible. Many people ask us, how did this SDS and RMG connection come together? Uh, it really was destiny, uh, to be honest. Uh, the answer to that question is actually has two parts to it. The most obvious was when we met RMG and we learned about their amazing model of development for permanent supportive housing and we did our due diligence to make sure it worked. We said, wow, we want to help you, <clears throat> excuse me, scale this up. This model needs to go bigger. We want to raise a fund that can make sure that you can do these, do more of them, do them faster. But there's a second part to this story and that's that in addition to wanting to build quality, permanent supportive housing, we wanted to do it faster, quicker, and cheaper. How are we doing it faster? Well, the SDS fund provides 100% of the capital that RMG needs for the construction and land acquisition. They don't need to chase any other dollars for any of these 30 projects. We can underwrite and close the financing in less than 60 days. It's that simple. How are we doing it quicker? Well, most permanent supportive housing takes five to seven years to aggregate the capital, to close the financing, and to complete the construction. Our model, it's 20 months. And I'm thrilled to say this project, from the financing to the closing to the end of construction, has reduced that by even a third more to 13 months total. And how are we doing it cheaper? Well, we're doing it cheaper because RMG has an amazing development model. That's the reality. They are consistently delivering units to Los Angeles at less than 200,000 per unit. That is a game changer. It's this mindset and philosophy that is embedded in the Dolores Huerta apartments to have quality permanent support housing faster, quicker, and cheaper. And we're really very, very excited that we've got so many dozens more of these on the way for the city of Los Angeles. We appreciate all of your support and interest in this new, new approach, and we look forward to working with all of you to make a difference in Los Angeles. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Debbie. We, do, we look forward to that uh, the, uh, the collaboration, and I, I'm going to say it again: not six hundred thousand dollars a unit, but two hundred thousand. Right? Yeah, that's uh, extraordinary and uh, certainly newsworthy. Well, we know that uh, getting to the finish line of a project like this uh, takes heart, vision, uh, and the next speaker encompasses both of those qualities. Uh, we're proud to have uh, been in collaboration with Tim Roth uh, and RMG Housing to build not only uh, housing, but quality housing. Uh, housing that uh, will put a roof over the heads of individuals who have been um, out for too long. Uh, Tim is a true visionary who recognizes a critical need to build projects swiftly and ones that don't cost a fortune per unit. And he's able to do that without cutting corners. So we still have the quality. 
Let's welcome Tim Roth, CEO of RMG Housing, to say a few words. Tim. Thank you very much. Good morning. When we set out to develop housing for the city's homelessness in 2015, we never envisioned doing it with the partnership of the city and using shipping crates to accomplish that. But unprecedented times called for bold new ideas. I'm thrilled the city has took a leap of faith with us on this project, but this would not have happened without the support of CD9 and Curran Price. Never before has a developer built permanent supportive housing on city-owned land with private funds from the private sector. What we're doing here should be a model of how to tackle homelessness for this great city of ours and the state of California. We look forward to working with Hoppix, the Hoppix team who will provide the on-site intensive case management services at this location. We feel the true value of the project is determined by the ability to provide the quality of life for the occupants. We also feel the developers should put money in and not take it out, and their rewards should come at the end with the success of the projects and the people that are living here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Again, it really uh, is a unique collaboration of, uh, of skills, energy, uh, money, uh, and a commitment. You know, that's what's utmost, a commitment to do the right thing and to do it uh, in a way that makes sense. And so, Tim, we look forward to uh, ongoing collaboration on a number of, uh, number of projects that we know are already on the drawing board. One of the keys to success on projects like this uh, is uh, making sure that uh, there's care and that there are services, uh, supportive services, to assist individuals uh, during this most critical time uh, in their lives and to get them back uh, on the track. In CD9, we've been fortunate to work side by side with the service provider who does just that, Hopix, which stands for Homeless Outreach Patient Integrated Care Systems, has been on the ground working tirelessly, uh, working with our encampments, working with individuals, helping individuals uh, overcome their struggles, uh, and they do it with passion, with heart, uh, and with patience. Our next speaker is one of the most prominent members of our South LA community, and she's a champion who stops at nothing to give voice to the voiceless. Hopix Executive Director uh, Veronica Lewis, please come forward and say a few words. Safety first. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Council Member Price, for your leadership to continue to try to figure out how to quickly get folks off the street. We're proud to be a part of one of your hundreds of units coming online. And we are grateful to SDS and RMG Housing for your willingness to, to help end human suffering and get people off the street quickly and um, more cost effectively. So we look forward to partnering with you as well. Hopix is a multi-service agency that's a division of SSG. And on any given night we're keeping over 1200 people off of the street and in addition to that we house hundreds of folks moving them directly from the street into permanent housing every single year this project is really one of the many examples that shows how creative and innovative we're being to to kick the door down related to the status quo that has been for the last several years. So we are excited to be a part of something that's innovative and creative. And I think it's fitting that it's named after you, Ms. Horta, because we continue to just scream and shout and, and make transformative change and make sure that we... Uh, push for equity and that we push for folks that are experiencing human suffering and that we change policies to ensure that it's a sustainable change. And so I'm so grateful that this is being named after you and I think it's fitting in line with what it is. 
this particular site is really special to us because our three South LA sites are literally all within two miles from here on the corridor of Slauson. So this is one of the sites that we're working with that is literally in our backyard. And in addition to the housing stuff that I mentioned, on any given day, we have over 50 men and women that are a part of our street-based engagement teams going out to the streets of South LA and surrounding areas and improving the quality of life and making sure that people that are still living outdoors don't die while they're living outdoors. And so we have deep connections and we're deeply rooted and connected to this community and we look forward to identifying those who have been suffering in this immediate radius to be able to come inside. Once the site is up, we'll be providing, as you heard Tim say, intensive case management for those who are interested, mental health support, substance use support, and really making sure that people have established social connections. Because one of the, mo one of the most um, grappling things about being homeless besides living outdoors is the isolation and the feeling that you're invisible and the feeling that there's no sense of humanity. And so our team helps to restore that while people are living on the street. But obviously when you come indoors, there's another level of isolation. And so we will be working Working to create a sense of community, to wrap our arms around these folks, and to help them transition from coming from outside to inside and establishing a sense of community while they come indoors. So thank you so much for being here. We hope to see you in the fall. Thank you, Veronica. She is really a force, as you see here in South L.A., a real strong advocate, uh, not just here in CD9, but throughout South L.A., and has become a, uh, a real leader. We are proud of the partnership that we have with Hopix, and we are proud of the commitment uh, that they have to, to make certain uh, that our unhoused uh, are getting the services that they need uh, and are able to transition uh, to a more stable uh, environment. It's now my absolute honor and privilege to introduce a living legend, an icon who really needs no introduction. Uh, as an international figure who for generations has fought for social, racial, and economic justice for all. So special is this angel that Governor Newsom declared April the 10th as her birthday. Let me back up. He declared April the 10th her birthday as Dolores Huerta Day in the state of California. So without further ado, uh, I present to you the courageous, the fearless organizer who's no stranger to CD9, Dolores Huerta. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Assemblyman uh, Kern Price, and I want to thank, uh, of course, uh, the uh, people that are making this possible to provide the capital and to, buy, to provide the, uh, the building, and also uh, those that are going to take care of the homeless folk as they transition into housing. Uh, I think for so many of, of us, this is a dream come true, because every time that we pass by and we see somebody on the streets that is homeless, I know like myself, it really hurts us to think of these poor families, poor children, hundred, I, I'm going to say tens of thousands of people that are homeless in our society. You know, I, uh, as, as uh, Assemblyman Price said, uh, that uh, when Governor Brown and the legislature declared Dolores Huerta Day, okay, and my birthday was on April 10th, but so I turned 91 years old. <laughs> Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because I c can never remember growing up in these United States of America, in the valley, I grew up in the valley, in Stockton, California, and then in Bakersfield, in San Francisco, San Jose, Los Angeles. Growing up, I never saw anybody homeless on the street. You know, during the Depression in the 30s, they did have the, what they call the hobos, the people that rode the railroad tracks. They would come to our house and they would want, they would want food. And as kids, we would give, give them Peter and jelly sandwiches, okay? Because my mother said you always have to give people food when they ask for it. But you see, what we see today, and seeing people on the street, we know that we, the richest country in the world, we cannot have any excuses for that to happen. We have got to erase the income inequality, the systemic racism, 
that exist in our society and uh, so that we do not have any people homeless on the street. So I am just so very grateful to be here today. And I want to thank you for even considering uh, putting my name on this project. And I want to thank uh, Assemblyman, I mean, City Councilman Price uh, for the leadership that he is taking to get some of the lucky people off of the street and getting them into shelter. Our, our foundation, the Dolores Huerta Foundation, uh, we have been working with homeless also up in the Antelope Valley. Oftentimes, uh, they have been evicted from their trailers. Uh, we have uh, a food banks where we're able to provide food every week for them and also hot meals. So this is very, very close to home uh, to the work that my foundation is doing. But I know that all of us working together that we can make this happen. I know that our governor, Gavin Newsom, when he did his, uh, his inaugural speech in 2020, that he made that the priority that we were going to get the homeless people sheltered in California. And then we had the pandemic that came. And instead of, instead of making it easier or making less people to be homeless, we found that there were more people uh, that became homeless uh, because rents, high rents, high utility bills, et cetera, et cetera. So s seeing what, what is happening here, I think it's going to be a model uh, for the rest of the country. And I hope that other developers uh, other uh, people that provide the capital will see this model that you're doing here and make it happen quicker, faster, so that more people can get off of the street. And we always have to remember, when we talk about the homeless, there are many, many children. These are families. They didn't just not single people. And, and the other thing, I really hate it when they disparage homeless people and say that they have mental issues. Well, we know, you know, one time in the state of California, we were number one in terms of mental health care. And then we had, a, I'm gonna go political here, okay? All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Then we had a governor named Ronald Reagan uh, who, you know, took us down on that. And uh, we were no longer the number one state that provided mental health. And when we talk about mental health, I like to say this. If you're walking down the street and you, some, you see somebody lying there and they have a broken leg or a broken arm, you're gonna call an ambulance to help them. So we cannot walk down the street and see a person that is mentally ill and, and not realizing that they also need help. So in addition to having this housing and having, uh, of course, the organization that is going to help the people, uh, we also need to say, we need to provide more social workers, right? More mental health specialists uh, to help them. And we should never say that all of the people that are homeless are there because they have mental issues or they have uh, substance abuse issues. No, these are people, these are human beings, and we have to remember that. And so I just wanna say I'm very grateful for all of the work that you're doing. And yes, we can make it happen. And by the way, uh, I should never be called an icon. My, my son, my youngest son, Ricky, says, Mom, you're, you're not an icon. You're an I can. <laughs> uh, you're an I can. <laughs> and, and this is what we have here today. We have an I can project uh, to make sure that our homeless are sheltered in house. So thank you very much. And si se puede. We can make it happen. Oh, my, my daughter will kill me if I don't. Uh, by the way, <laughs> I am having a birthday celebration not on April 10th, but on May the 22nd. And so if anybody would like to participate, it's gonna be viral, okay? And uh, we're actually uh, raising funds because uh, we are establishing a Peace and Justice Cultural Center in Bakersfield, California, Kevin McCarthy's district, everybody, okay? <laughs> to train organizers and to go out there and carry the, the, carry the word and the message of organizing and peace and justice. Si se puede, gracias, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, 91 years young, huh? What a uh, what an inspiration, as always, uh, Dolores. And uh, you know, and you hit it right on the head. I 
not an icon, uh, icon but an I can. And uh, you certainly have uh, demonstrated that and have continued to inspire us all. You know, and as she pointed out so eloquently, you know, it's not just enough to house. We have to provide services. We have to provide support. Uh, we have to show that we care. Uh, and so that's what we're doing uh, as a team collaboratively. And so we really, uh, really appreciate that. Uh, Dolores, uh, you know, you've always uh, been a, a shero for, for many of us. Uh, and certainly have been an inspiration as we try to address many of these issues in uh, CD9. Uh, but this time I want to ask uh, Ellie and Lewis from uh, De De Dolores Worth Elementary School to come up with a special early Mother's Day presentation. <laughs> from Dolores Webster Elementary School in our district, right around the corner. Uh, before I uh, take a moment to uh, let the press ask, ask any questions, let me just uh, thank uh, the city family who is well represented here and our friends from Channel 35 who are in the house. And so we appreciate them uh, making sure that uh, this uh, this day is recorded in history. Uh, but are there any questions? Any questions uh, to any of our partners, our friends, supporters? Well, I guess the project is speaking for itself, huh? All right. Um, well, that concludes our formal presentation. Again, let me just thank all of you for, for being here. Uh, let me also uh, just thank the CD9 family, uh, our uh, deputy district director, our deputy chief of staff uh, uh, is, uh, is, is, is with us here. James Westbrooks. Where's James? James is, oh, <laughs> okay, James is here. Um, Sherilyn, uh, who is not here, but who is really point on, uh, oh, Sherilyn is here. Uh, in the back, she was a point on, with working with RMC and S, uh, SDS. Uh, also here with us, uh, Mike Castillo, our business director. Uh, Angelina, who's not he here with us, but she's represented by Didi from the communications team. Uh, Nora, Kendall, Joel, our deputies. Uh, and so CD9 is in the house, and thank you all for making today possible. Uh, but this uh, concludes the formal part of our program. We're going to... Uh, have a photo op with the uh, with our shovels and and our hats. Are we ready? All right. Well, let's. Uh, um, can you tell what Yes, we can. Or? Yes. So, Mrs. Virtual wants you to know that si se puede means yes, we can. Si se puede. And now we do a little scoop. All right. All right, everybody. Get with this one. Two hands there. Got it. Veronica, move in a little bit. There we go. We got a good skin to show. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck it now? You can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Can I do it one more time? Do it one more time.